Hey everyone, welcome back to the Millikan Minute. I'm Dane Lister, Director of Media Relations and Publications at Millikan University. And joining us today is Dr. Travis Wilcoxon, who is the Associate Professor of Physiological Ecology and he's Chair of the Biology Department at Millikan. Travis, thanks for joining us today, appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Hello, everybody. <laughs> uh, Travis, first question, um, how long have you been at Millikan? And uh, can you talk about uh, just some areas of expertise? Uh, yeah, this is uh, the, I guess we're still in the first semester of year 11. So um, I've made, made the decade team. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> um, my area of expertise is, um, as you mentioned, physiological ecology, which means I uh, study how sort of the inner workings of wild animals interacts with their environment around them. Um, any particular projects you want to talk about that maybe certain students are working on that might be you know, unique to some of the listeners and people you know, want to look it into Millikan? Yeah, uh, you know, some things are very appropriate for you know, what's going on in our world right now. As I mentioned, I'm a, a wildlife disease person. Um, and while I don't have anybody working specifically with COVID, uh, some of the diseases that we study do jump from animals into humans like COVID did. Um, and so I have a student who just started uh, a couple weeks ago, and she's studying uh, toxoplasma, which is a parasite that lives in animals with backbones. And it's most famous because it's been linked to um, potentially being a cause of schizophrenia in humans when it crosses from the bloodstream into the brain and lodges itself into the brain tissue. And one of the reasons why it's been linked to that is because it causes schizophrenia-like behavior in mice. Mice then don't behave normally. Cats catch mice. Cats get toxo. Cats bring toxo into the house. People get toxo from their cats. Wow. And so there's this really complex, you know, ecological cycle there that we are very much a part of because we're uh, suspect to that or subject to that. But birds of prey also eat mice. And so we have this relationship with the Illinois Raptor Center uh, where we've had a lot of research projects with them. And so one of the students now is trying to see how frequently that parasite gets in the blood of the birds of prey that are eating those mice, similar to the way it gets into the cats. Um, you know, and so that serves multiple benefits. One, we understand other predators' roles in that virus or in that uh, parasite's movement. And also uh, it helps the Illinois Raptor Center folks understand the degree to which their birds might be exposed to something that they too have to be cautious of. Um, another thing I wanted to bring up was you lead this really cool immersion class called Ecological Journeys. And I mean, it literally is a journey when you think about it, because you guys go to places like South Africa, Florida, uh, Costa Rica. Um, can you talk a little bit about this class and the things you get to do with the students? And then also, is there a favorite spot that you've been to that you just you love checking out and being able to do research? Sure. Yeah. Um, I, to date, have only done the Florida one, but you know, Judy Parrish has done the other ones for a very long time. Um, she sort of created that concept and, and has carried that out to, as you mentioned, South Africa, Alaska, Costa Rica. David Horn used to do one to the Galapagos Islands. Oh, cool. And yeah, that, <laughs> the general thought is when it comes to learning about ecosystems, there is no classroom better than the field. And there's no classroom better than natural areas that have been protected that you can sort of contrast with the more populated areas that we're all already familiar with. And that universally applies across all those places we just mentioned, whether it's Florida, Alaska, Costa Rica, South Africa. And we do, in a very short period of time, far more work than a student would do over the course of a semester, spread out over 16 weeks. And yet the students don't realize, and they don't ever like, man, this is so much work, because they're just engaged, they're immersed, they're not thinking about anything else. And the retention of information, the amount of learning that happens in such a short period of time when that is their life for a couple of weeks is just really, really powerful. Awesome. Um, I want to take a quick break from the academic side of things. Um, Travis, what does Travis, Travis Wilcoxon like to do outside the classroom? <laughs> uh, I love to cook. And uh, up until, you know, the pandemic, we did a biology barbecue each spring and I would smoke a bunch of meat and bring it to campus and we would serve whoever wanted to come be a science enthusiast that day. Mm -hmm. uh, I usually have my upper level classes. I invite them over for dinner once a semester. My research team comes over for dinner at least once a semester. Um, wildlife photography. And that's where it sort of overlaps. Uh, you know, I... I 
am out there doing research, but oftentimes research is restricted to whatever individual species I'm focused on. But just experiencing the natural world through the lens of a camera is also a lot of fun. Is there a particular animal or a bird or species that is your favorite that you like, you always love to the photograph or things like that? So I really like to photograph American white pelicans when they're migrating through for the winter. They just, they're such, they're pretty much the largest bird that we have um, other than maybe whooping cranes um, that are moving through in, in, in any numbers. And when they take over a body of water, it's just like this ocean of you know white pelicans. And most people think about pelicans, they think about the coast. And yet we have way more of them and they're bigger than the brown pelicans on the coast. So just in terms of like, if I want a, a serene environment to take photos in, but from the competitive standpoint, photographing warblers, these tiny little birds that like to hang out in the dense leaves of the trees and trying to get that angle, trying to get their full face and their butt and the whole thing in there, that's, <laughs> that's fun and also torments me. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> um, my last question, and uh, it goes back to the students and the curriculum. So... I know a number of times you've told me and I, that students uh, that have studied under you or at Milliken that have gone on to grad school, they come back or they, they share with you how prepared they were when they go to grad school. In your opinion, what is it about Milliken's hands-on learning that sets these students up for success? Because it seems like that's become the trend over the last few years that these students go on and they are just ready to go when they get to that next level. Yeah, I think that... Um because we really focus on developing scientists and not just science students. So um, if you think about like science content knowledge, sure, that's important, but science is a process. And so when you teach them how to think through a process, when they experience something new they've never seen before, they have the skills to work through it and to think through it and not just like, oh my gosh, I didn't memorize that one thing. When I got to grad school, they, didn't want me, they wanted me to have different things memorized. Like it doesn't matter. They get there and they're like, well, I was never taught just to memorize a bunch of stuff anyway. I was taught to find evidence, to build an argument, and then to ask questions about it and move on from that. Great stuff. Uh, Travis, can't thank you enough for joining us on the uh, Millican Minutes. And we learned a lot about uh, the great work you're doing and the students are doing, all the incredible learning experiences that your department offers uh, each year. And, of course, uh, um, your passion as a photographer when it comes to cancer and nerves. But um, thank you again, and uh, I hope we can talk later on down the road and hear more about the great work you're doing, and uh, we'll definitely talk soon, okay? Okay, thank you, Dane.